Hey team, my name is Elisa and welcome to my channel. If you've never been here before, I create my dream wardrobe from scratch and I'm taking you along for the ride. So maybe you can recreate some of the things that I make for yourself at home. You might be able to tell that I am a little bit sick. <laughs> I have been fighting a throat infection for the whole week. It wasn't much fun, I have to say, but I'm determined to make this video happen, which is why I just took the final reveal shots of what I'm wearing right here. I'm not gonna show you any more than what you can see at the moment. I made this dress actually already a couple weeks ago, and I wanted to make something super simple, something easy to wear, easy to throw on, that you don't really have to think about much, but still looks cute and put together. So I decided to make a bubble frock, which is basically really just a shapeless, short, voluminous dress with puff sleeves, um, as you can see here. And I also decided to give it an open back, so if you're keen to see this, stick around until the end. I'm going to show you how you can create this pattern for yourself at home. Without anything fancy, you can really just make this using a t-shirt. That's all you need to create this pattern. And this is also a super beginner-friendly make, I would say. It really just requires two meters of fabric and elastic. And that's it really. No complicated zippers, no complicated buttons, closures. It's all really easy. I hope you enjoyed this video. So let's jump straight in. All right, so I'm gonna show you now how I created this pattern for this bubble frock by using a t-shirt. Obviously, this is not actually a t-shirt. This is just a piece of paper that looks like a t-shirt, but if you grab one of your favorite t-shirts and you fold it in half, then this is really the base that you need for this bubble frock. So what I did is I grabbed a piece of paper and I folded it down the middle. I like to use a big old craft paper roll for this to make the patterns to scale for myself. But if you don't have something like this, you can also simply use baking sheets. They tend to work quite well as well. So I, as I said, grabbed my good old t-shirt and I folded it down the center front, which is this fold right here. I grabbed my center front and then I placed it onto a long fold on my piece of paper. We are going to use this to create the pattern for both the front and the back of this dress. So what I decided to reuse from my t-shirt is basically just the neck hole and the first two centimeters off my shoulder. So this is the corner that I reused. I then also created a little dot in the end of my arm side line. The arm side line on the t-shirt is basically just this seam right here. And at the end of the seam, at the end of your armhole down here, you create a dot. This is really what you need from your t-shirt. You then can remove it. I then grabbed a curved ruler. If you don't have a curved ruler, you can just do this freestyle to your liking. And I created a new arm side line, which reached all the way from the end of my natural armhole to the end of my two centimeter long shoulder seam, which is this. This is my new arm side line, so to speak. This is where my ragline sleeve is gonna go in later. Now I need to create the rest of the dress. Um, for that, I simply grabbed some measuring tape and put it at the end of my neckline right here. And I measured down on my body, on myself, to see how long I want my dress to be. My dress was about 85 centimeter long. Since this is not to scale, I'm just gonna make something that resembles the length of that dress here on my piece of paper but you will want to measure down from the end of your neck hole to your hem the length of the entirety of your dress since the dress is going to have a sort of circle skirt what i then did was i grabbed my measuring tape and i created this little loophole here which i placed my pen into the end of like this i then put my left hand at the end of my neck hole and my right hand i used to adjust my pencil so that it will meet this measuring point that i figured out down here which is the end of my dress and now you just swoop over like this and i then kind of like freestyle as well simply drew in the side seam of my dress which looked like this so this is already the front of the dress, which I'm going to cut out now. So this is our center front fold, which I'm going to mark like this. And if this was already cut out on a piece of fabric, then this is what the dress would look like from the front. You could actually use this pattern piece if you wanted and um, used it for both front and back and you already would have some sort of dress. We're not finished yet. On this pattern piece, I also decided to mark in whereabouts my pockets would go in. So I decided to go for pockets, which I marked here on my side and they looked something like this, like, like these like grape-like almost 
pieces of pattern, which I later used to cut from my fabric. So to create the back of my dress, I grabbed another piece of paper and created a fold like this. And then I grabbed the front of my dress and placed it onto that fold with the center front fold again. And basically, you will see that I'm lacking a bit of uh, paper here, but basically I just retraced the skirt for the back until I meet this point which is the end of my armhole. I then also retraced the armhole as well as the shoulder. And now we can draw in some style lines. So we need to create an open back. So what I did is about where you think is right for you. This is really up to taste. I decided that my open back would go down about where my bust line is, which is about where the arm side line is and goes over like this. So what I had to do is I had to create this square out in a 90 degree angle to my center back line, which is this and then I had to curve it out to meet the end of my armhole like this. So this is the back skirt. As I said, I also traced out my arm side line and I did this because I knew that I had to create the braces which are going to hold the sleeve in the back as well. So we need to create a shallow neckline here in the back which is a little bit different from the neckline in the front and from that point where the neckline begins I measured down about two centimeters which is about here. From the arm side end here i measured out between three and a half and four centimeters over on that line and that really depends on your taste as well so this is basically when you connect these two points the brace for where your sleeve is going to go in and that's already everything you need now let's cut these pieces the skirt and our two brace pieces and these two brace pieces once opened up gonna look like this they're obviously not connected here so these are the two brace pieces and this is the skirt in the back you will have to cut facing for this part of the skirt and you will see why later in the video because we are going to gather up that part of the skirt with an elastic and then like i said we have the front of the dress right here you will also have to cut some facing for your front neckline as well to create a nice finish and the back braces you will have to cut two times each to be able to overturn them so that's the base for the dress already done now the last thing to consider are the sleeves so for the sleeves i like to keep it super 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 simple so i again just grab a piece of paper with a fold and roughly having in mind this measurement i create this measurement down here plus a good 10 centimeters because we are going to gather up the sleeve later so there's going to be ruffles in the armhole i decided to go a little up like that and create a cuff for the sleeve like this which this part is later going to be a tunnel where the elastic can go in and this would be your sleeve piece really which goes in here gathered up obviously and i hope this made sense because that's it really that's the pattern so like i said that's the back skirt that's the front of the dress it's not just the skirt you will have to cut facing for the opening here in the back as well as for your neckline you will have to cut these pieces two times each to be able to overturn them with each other and you will have to cut two of these sleeves to have one for each arm and that is it let's sew the dress Alright, I'll start to pin together the skirts. So I have these pieces here for the back of the dress. I'm just checking 
things are going to be my own sides. And this is the facing. So I'm placing the pieces so that I can overturn them with each other. So first off, I need to make sure that my straps are going in. So I'm going to pin them in here, placing the two pieces right sides touching. As this thing is going to have sleeves, the arm side can stay raw and not overturned because that's where the sleeve is going to go in later. I'll sew around here, down here, and along this line for both of these pieces. And once I overturn them, ideally, we're going to have a very beautiful, crisp result. to think about how to connect them with the front. So this is the right side of the front. First, I need to attach the facing of the front neckline, which I have right here. This goes on here first. Okay, so I just attached the facing to the front neckline. So it looks like this inside. And now I can connect the shoulders. And the way I'm going to do this is placing the two right sides together, opening up the facing and the shell for both the front and the back at the shoulder like this. Then I'm placing the seam dead center on top of each other. Is the idea. I'm gonna sew along these straights, but before I do that, I'm also gonna surge my facing in the front just to make life easier for myself. Alright, so all of these points are now connected. Now we have something looking like this. This is going to be the closure in the back, just this little ribbon up situation here so that's the back right and now we have the skirt in the back which needs to be gathered up so there's an elastic that's going to go in here I'm thinking I'm first going to surge this curve here that's the first thing I'm going to do all right so I have this elastic here which needs to feed the back and gather it together. So I'm gonna just um, put this on my back and get a rough feeling for how wide I want it to be. I think that's how wide I want it to be. So I'm gonna cut it off here. And the idea is that this overlap that I have here is now gonna be turned around like so, which is a bit difficult because it's a curve, but it's fine if we get a few crinkles because it's gonna be gathered up and nobody's ever gonna see but it's not perfect. So I'm just folding it over like this. And I'm gonna try to follow the curve somewhat, which is, as I said, gonna be really difficult because it's a curve. <laughs> Would've been smarter to make it a straight, for sure. Ugh, this isn't gonna warp so bad. Hmm, what am I gonna do? Cut some facing, probably. Oh, I don't want to. Hmm. <clears throat> I will have to cut some facing for this because it's gonna warp all the way otherwise and I don't want that. I want it to look clean. As clean as possible. So facing it is, let's see how much scraps we have left. Okay, again, facing goes right sides touching onto this curve. Now I'm gonna sew along that curve. Alright, so now that I've created this facing tunnel situation, I can actually insert the elastic. As per usual, I'm doing that with a safety pin and I'm going in from one side and I'm trying to feed it through here. Yay! Elastic is in and now we need to think about how best 
to attach the back strap pieces here because I am not entirely sure. I think it's a good time to try things on. All right, so this is where we are at the moment. Hard to see where this is going, I think. There are the pockets hidden here in the side, like this, quite large, quite comfy. Then we have this situation here in the back. And the problem that I already thought was going to happen was that these are gaping. These are gaping quite dramatically, so I need to figure out how to solve this. I might even, I might even add a little dart into them. I'm gonna cut the armholes here a little bigger. I know this is a raglan, but still, this is supposed to go up here. And then I'm gonna cut this out a little bit and see if that helps. So now that I've attached the straps in the back, it's actually much better. You might not have to change anything here. However, it's very tight here. So it's gonna get a little looser with the sleeves in, but it's still tight. So I'm wondering what I can do to get some more space here, probably just Again, cut this a bit more curved, is my assumption. Hmm. But the back is cute. Alright, so I changed where I attached the straps in the back. And this is much better, and I feel like this is how it was supposed to be all along anyway. And I think that's how I made the pattern. And I just forgot. <laughs> so, this makes much more sense. No gaping in sight. Now, it's still a bit tight around here, okay, yeah, that didn't change, but again, once the sleeves are in, this line is going to be set inward a little bit, and then that's going to be better too, I think. So, let's add the sleeves. So, I just sewed together the sleeves at the sides real quick. This is the arm side curve or the arm hole curve. And now I can pin the sleeves into the armhole. I made it so that there is a bit of width that I can gather and I'm probably gonna gather that up at the shoulder. So I'm gonna start at the end of my armhole here and then I'm gonna pin it into the armhole flat for a little while. And now I'm gonna find the midpoint of my sleeve which I nipped earlier and I'm gonna pin it onto the shoulder seam, a tiny little shoulder seam and then the rest I'm going to hand pleat so we gather up the width in the shoulder. Now 